Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and I'm going to be taking you through three complex examples of annuities today. This is part of Unit 4 General Maths in Queensland. In my previous few videos, we've looked at different ways to calculate future and present value of an annuity with some fairly simple, straightforward worked examples. But there's been some different hybrids or combinations of different types of problems together and some people have become very confused about it. So we're going to look at some more difficult examples today. So in this first example, we've got an annuity with an initial investment of $40,000, followed by deposits of $800 every month for six years. We need to find the future value of the investment. Now, this is a little bit more complicated because it's not a straightforward annuity. In fact, we've got this initial investment that's not an annuity at all. It's just a straightforward compounded $40,000. And then on top of that, we've got the $800 deposits every month, that's a regular annuity. So effectively what you've got is this hybrid or a combination of a normal investment with an annuity in the same bank account. But we're going to treat them as separate investments. That $40,000 does not get treated as an annuity and the annuity does not get treated like a regular compound interest problem. We're going to bring the two together. So firstly, I'm going to write the formula. Now notice what I could have done is just worked out the $40,000 future value and then the future value of the eight hundred dollars and added the two together. Alternatively, I can bring the two formulas together and make one formula. And that's what I've done here. So the P, uh, 1 plus I to the power of N, that's my normal compound interest formula on the QCAA sheet. And then the future value formula on the right, that's also on the QCAA formula sheet. And I've just added the two together because that's what we're effectively doing. So now I'm going to state my variables. The principal is $40,000, that's for my standard investment. The M value is my regular payment of $800. I'm transforming my interest rate and showing my working for that. And I'm also transforming my period into 72 months. Also important that I show my working for that. Next step is I'm going to substitute into the formula. And I'm going to work this out in very small steps on my calculator, which I'll take you through little by little. And it's important that I show all of my working for how I do the information in the brackets, for example, and then how I simplify that. So I'm taking you through here. Feel free to pause if you need to have a look and see what I'm doing with the formula. And this is an important step here that I've shown. So even if you perhaps skip one of the other steps, this step here, you don't want to skip because this shows the future value of 52,000 approximately of the $40,000 added to the future value of your annuity, which is about $65,000. So we've got the future value of both of these here. It's important that we make sure we've got that total somewhere. We add them together and we've got $117,000 as our total future value of the whole investment. And of course, we're going to write a statement for that. Let's look at worked example two. This time we've got an annuity bought for $40,000, earning 6% monthly, paying the investor $2,500 every month. So some of the typical annuities that we've looked at in my last videos were all ones where we were depositing the money in. The investor was putting the money in the bank and then we had a future value sometime in the distant future. In this case, we've invested in the annuity and it's paying us. So because money is coming out of it, we're going to use something that's going to be different to a regular annuity where we're paying the money in. We're not considering this to be a perpetuity either because there is a compounding component to this and because the balance is going to be changing every month. You see that in that last statement, find the balance every month. So that tells us straight away, not a perpetuity. So this is really following more of a pattern of a reducing balance loan. So let that just settle in your mind. Even though it's an investment, what's happening with a re reducing balance loan is the, the money that's borrowed gets interest added and then payment taken out. And this is the same sort of thing here. We've invested in money, so the money's in the bank, we've got the interest being added, and then we're taking money out. Now the money we take out might be more than the interest earned, which will reduce the balance of our investment over time, or it could be less. We may be earning far more interest than we're actually withdrawing, and what we're gonna see, even though we're taking a payment out, is that the overall balance is growing. So either scenario is possible. So firstly, we're going to write that recurrence relation for a reducing balance loan. So this is why it's important to understand that annuities can follow this pattern on occasion. Now we're going to state our variables. Once again, I've transformed the interest rate into a monthly rate. I've got my starting amount of 40000 and my payment that's coming out, which will remain fixed, of $2,500. 
Now, after the first month, once I've substituted that in, I'm going to end up with a balance of 37,700. So you might ask yourself, well, how could that be? This is an investment. Well, have a look here. When I multiply 40,000 by 1.005, I end up with 40,200. That means I've earned $200 interest. So I'm not earning a lot of interest, but I'm taking $2,500 out of that investment. So of course my balance is going to decline and decline quite fast. Now that I use that balance and I carry that forward in my second use of the recurrence relation and then I apply all of the formula again and I end up with the balance of 35,000 and that 35,000 is then used in the third iteration of my recurrence relation as my new carried forward balance. I multiply that by 1.005 and at the end of the third month I've now got a balance of $33,000. So of course my last step here is to write a statement. So you can see in this case we've got a similar situation to a reducing balance loan. With a reducing balance loan we want the balance to get down to zero eventually. We don't want to have this debt hanging over us forever. Unfortunately with an investment this is going to end up being zero at some point in the future too which is a bit of a shame. You know, that's not kind of not what we really want investments to do. Okay, last example. Now this is one that has caused a great deal of debate in my classes. It comes from a public sample paper from the QCAA. And I have to agree, the wording is a little bit confusing. So let's read it. To provide herself with a regular income at retirement, Mary invests in an annuity worth $270,000 at 3.5% compounding monthly for 20 years. Calculate how much she will receive each month. So firstly, I have to try and rule out and try and work out what is it this question is asking me to do. I know I need to find M, but do I need to find that in a present value or a future value context, or do I need to find that in a perpetuity context? That's what, I, what I've got to work out. Well, firstly, it's not a perpetuity because we're compounding, so I can rule that one out. Now I've just got to decide between is it the future value or the present value. Well, $270,000 is not the future value. It's going to be worth something else in 20 years time. It's worth $270,000 now. And that word worth is our big clue. And you'd have to think about this logically too. You couldn't really retire on $270,000 and pay yourself um, a monthly payment for very long. It wouldn't, wouldn't last very long at all. Okay, so the word worth indicates this is what the, the present value of the annuity is if it was taken back to its original value and treated like a normal compound interest investment. So when you see questions like this, you've got to really think this through carefully, rule out perpetuity, and then make that decision between future value and present value, because that's going to determine which formula you need to use. So now I'm going to write the present value formula. Now before I go on, I'm going to talk to you very briefly about formulas. Notice that this one is not on the QCAA formula sheet. And in the Jacaranda textbook, it's presented in this format, but in the Pearson textbook, it looks different. It's got negative powers. And my students have asked me, which formula do I use? What, am, I, am I using the wrong formula if I use the, don't use the Pearson formula? Well, in a nutshell, both the Pearson formula with the negative powers and the Jacaranda formula are the same formula. They've just been transposed differently and the variables have been moved around. Now, I do like the simplicity of the Pearson formula in the sense of there's a lot less going on inside the brackets. However, I do like this Jacaranda version of the formula simply because it's not that different from the one on the QCAA formula sheet. So it makes it easier for students to remember. Whichever formula you choose to use, you do have to memorize something. So I suggest choose the one that is easiest for you to remember. And it's not always the same as what's the easiest for me. So we're going to go with the Jacaranda formula today. We're going to substitute all of those variables into the formula. And it's a fairly um, easy process, just remembering not to round too quickly on your calculator or to round multiple times. So here we go again, we've got the same formula there from the previous page. I've simplified our um, interest rate a little bit. We're going to take that to the power of 240 and find that that's 2.011702. There's a lot more decimal places to that, so make sure you've written that down somewhere because you want to have as many as possible to keep that, um, keep that flow going with your formula so you don't, don't round off too early. And then we find that M is going to be equal to $1,565.89. And that's how much Mary is going to receive every month in retirement. It's not a lot to live on. So I would say Mary might need to think about investing a little bit more to start with. 
Well, I hope this uh, has been a valuable exercise for you today. If you have any other problems that you would like me to create a video for, please don't hesitate to, to contact me or to write in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day.